The man who built the powerhouse, that is UConn men's basketball, is in the house at Campbell Pavilion tonight. Three-time national champion head coach Jim Calhoun with us courtside, the Hall of Famer. 1999, 2004, 2011, and on banner night here, Coach Calhoun able to make his way to Campbell. Jim, it's a special evening here. When you think about what you built and the way that Dan Hurley has been able to now get it revved back up, what comes to mind? Yeah, well, he, he's got it back up on a, on a program that was built really solid. You think going back to God rest his soul, Cliff Robinson, our first really good pro, and guys came along, and then Donnie's group came, and you know, they were this far away, this far away, but the winning, the working, and the program culture was built. I, I have a real question for you. Besides Karan and Rip and Ray and Danielle, Charlie Villanueva, with me in that group, who was your favorite player? Besides those other guys I mentioned at first. Well, let's get it straight up. You won. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say to America. You, you don't have to be as honest today as you were when I played for you. I want you to know. Lie to me once, coach. I love you to death. That I do. <laughs> but most importantly, I told him after his freshman year, you're going to leave Scott Burrell, the great Scott Burrell, yeah. is going to beat you up every day. Yeah. He said, let me think about that. <laughs> and Donnie Wood. What was it like recruiting Donnie Marshall? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, he had more questions. And normally I have a lot of answers. Yeah. But with Donnie, it was really hard. But no. But after that year, he looked at me and said, I'm going to tell you a couple things, Coach. I'm coming back and playing for you. I said, I'm not so sure about that. He said, and I'm going to be a captain, which he was. And then I'm going to play in the NBA. And look at this kid. Like, he was just barely getting off the bench. <laughs> And it all came true. Like he really is crazy. I like this kid. I'm gonna keep him around. Wow. Yeah, a little more than crazy. Yeah. yeah, a little more than crazy. By the way, the thing that's noticeable, and someone asked me some games, when did you know you were in good shape when we signed the contract? Yeah. No, I mean honestly. Yes. And the preseason is somewhat farthest. But you can start to see, even with this, how the depth, they have no answer for our big guys. Well, that's understandable. I thought the defensive play by the guards was really important, getting them to hurry up a little bit, and yep. obviously they're in trouble now. Doesn't mean they won't compete. Doesn't mean we won't find things out tonight, because you got to. But it does give us a better look at ourselves, as opposed to kind of, you know, beating the hell out of each other. Coach, how do you feel in, in this day and age? You know, you were ahead of your time by going out of the state to, to grab a bunch of recruits, going over to Israel and grabbing guys. But in the portal age, where guys aren't staying a long time, every player who averages two points a game thinks he's going to the NBA. <laughs> How do you think, as a Hall of Fame coach, doing it a, a certain way, how the game has changed today in terms of recruiting well, and someone players? someone asked me, would I go, you know, with NIL? Of course I would, because that's the game. Yeah. Would I like it? No, I wouldn't. What I'd rather have is a trust fund per way, and then after the first year done, you've earned whatever amount of money. Sophomore year, more, more. And all of a sudden, we aren't buying plays, and, and no one's really buying plays, but they're getting their due for all the hard work they put in. But you, you earn it. You know my big thing about earning it. So I worry about not the game quite as much. I worry about the idea of having to earn things because like for all of us, I know your story pretty well. You actually know my story pretty well. And we both know to get to where we needed to be, we had a lot of work involved. <laughs> Could you imagine the questions Donnie Marshall would have asked if, if he was playing during the and NIL days? Just one, how much? That's it. That's the only question, well, most important question. Today, he would have told me zero, and I would have gone somewhere else. There is no <laughs> man in America who wants the last coach in this game today. They have to say, I, I don't want anything to do with the transfer yeah. portal. Of course you do. I don't want anything to do with the uh, NIL. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the NIL. How it's being applied is the whole thing. I talked to a, a recent high school grad of top prospects, and, I, and the mother was very kindly said to me, he hasn't really found anything, but he's got a $500,000 a year offer. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Wow. I made my first year like uh, 18000 at Northeastern, to give you an idea. My point being is not, there's got to be a better way for us to make this still beautiful, still what it is, a game, the kids, and then in turn, find a better way. Well, speaking of the game, Coach, defensively, you know, Hurley has said he has been to the NCAA tournament with a defensive-minded team and gotten knocked out. 
He says, now offensively, I'm, I'm going to focus on that first. As a defensive coach, because I believe that's what you were, because we yep. pressed 40 minutes a night. <laughs> Where does that rank in terms of, okay, your priorities? How do you stack those up and say, we're only going to score or we're going to score first and worry about defense later? How do you balance that? Well, I'll, I'll tell you something. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Back in the day when Pittsburgh was one of the, the teams, the reason they couldn't win was because they were such a defensive team and a half-court team. I always felt every day out of nowhere, and you kind of remember this, a 1-3-1 on the show. We'd go and wrap press all over the place. You've got to be able to win a number of different ways. We played Butler, 1918. A wonderful game to watch, as you can well imagine. <laughs> and in the second, we have winning 52. We blocked uh, 16 shots that night. We changed what we were doing, and we said, don't try to go slow like them. We played fast. Well, all of a sudden, that 4-5 to game 14, they had no ability to come back at us. And I've been involved in the other end, uh, and I just think that you've got to find multiple ways to win a game. Still, we're going to defend you, we're going to rebound, and we're going to run. And if you do those things, but have different ways to win, you get a chance. Try, 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 to, try to think of both John and, and Donnie, you guys see an awful lot of games. How many single, okay, functional teams play one way all the time, win the whole thing? Because right, right. it, there's six trips. Yeah. There's six trips in the tournament alone. And you're going to find somebody who doesn't play the way you want right. to play. <laughs> and you can't force them. I mean, you know, uh, one of my former assistants, uh, Steve Pichel, playing Princeton tonight. I said, are you all right? That's what I mean. I said, it's going to be in the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and regardless of what happens, your stomach's going to feel terrible. <laughs> I hope he wins, but my point yeah, is, right. hard to play against somebody who won't play the way you, you want to. Jim Calhoun, the Hall of Famer, joining us. You have a lot of conversations with these guys when you visit practices. You've talked a number of times with Donovan Klingon. What do you make of him? Well, he's down at 292, which is good to see him getting skinny. <laughs> he's, an, he's an enormous, wonderful, wonderful kid. The first thing I ever told him, Donnie will get a kick out of this. So what kind of exercise are you doing? He started to show me. He said, no, put your back against the wall. Now, I want you to start doing a semi-squat. Mm. That's how I want you to start receiving the ball. It's the first thing I said to him, because he's catching everything straight up. Yeah. And he is such a receptive kid. I mean, I mean he's, he's unique. I mean, we all know he's big. We all know he's strong. But he got some other things, too. Good hands, really good hands, good finisher. And, you know, he, he, he never, because he didn't go prep school and stuff. He, didn't play as good a competition maybe as in high school. Yeah. So he's got a chance. And now with, with, with the Samson kid, starting to kind of show some signs. You got a big, strong guy, and you got a running guy. It's a tough combination. And it's almost the reverse for Klingon of last year with Sonogo. Exactly. Now right. he's the starter, and yeah. Samson can come off the, the bench to help him a little bit, spe spelling. You know, I, I, I really thought last year's team won as much as anything else. I love the team, I love the way they play together. But here's the thing I really liked. You could go to the bench, Joey California. <laughs> I would have never called you Donnie Seattle. I want you to know that. Thank that you. Thank you. <laughs> Coach, you want to stay with us for the rest of the half? All right, yeah. You got time? You, will. you got a date? I saw Pat up there. You ain't going anywhere with my girlfriend's her. up there. <laughs> More Jim Calhoun coming up. Less than four minutes to go in this first half. Sixth ranked UConn up 17 on Northern Arizona. John Fanta, Jim Calhoun, Donnie Marshall with you. Donnie, we talked about the Huskies defense earlier. Yeah, something that Jim Calhoun knows so much about. This is, again, we want to we want to highlight the fact that, yeah, they can score the ball, but young guy Stephen Castle on the basketball gets a stop, and now everyone else is stepping up. He's staying with the play. To me, Coach, these are instinctual things. Now you run them into Donovan Kling, and it's nice to have a safety valve, but also to see Castle instinctually kind of know where to be. That's special. And then he rotates over. He would have taken the big man. You know, one thing big guys don't like is getting dunked on. <laughs> no. That's right. So You're right. I used to try to send, if we send one of our big guy, Travis, whoever it may be, to block shots, cover his man, because if he gets dunked on, he ain't going to block that shot. That's no right. Block. That's right. And people can forget that. Yeah. But the psychological aspects, they don't want some kid dunk on, but that's another aspect people don't see. Yeah. Things just starting to feel as a shot blocker. And the thing that I think is important, 
to note, especially for a young player, you don't have to block every shot. If you can change five shots and block two, you've done your job. Well, a, a guy named Bill Russell, when I was trying out for the Celtics. He was pretty good. Yeah, he was okay. <laughs> except he was a player coach that year. And yeah. We kept this guy have a check. I don't know. How did he turn out? <laughs> yeah, how, yeah, how did that work out? And let me go. But I still remember. So he's scrimmaging. And Ross is on the other team, obviously. And next thing I look up, my first shot, Golden. Next shot, close to Golden. They called them both. They said, I'm just showing you what the night's going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the great lines of all time. <laughs> Purposely, let me know. Yeah. You want to drive in here, boy? Yeah. That's what you're going to get. <laughs> Here's what Every the night's going to look like. Right? <laughs> A great line. Oh, man. Hey, you think about, you said the name Havlicek, and it, it got me thinking of the last week, one of the legends of the game in coach Bob Knight passing away. And I know you had a relationship, a friendship with Bob. How would you sum uh, him up? I got to know him bringing a bunch of kids up in an old station wagon. They called it that then, up to West Point. He was the coach, Alabama, a legendary Jersey defensive coach. He looks at me and says, where you guys come from? Boston, boom, boom. How long did he get you? Only two and a half hours. Okay. And afterwards, he talked to me. So come on up, back up, see a game. I did. And after that, we developed this friendship. And you know, yeah, there was a lot of yeah. SOBs and they'll throw in, but he never did anything but show respect for me. I suffered because he was one of the greatest coaches who ever lived. His intellect was beyond belief. But he had, and I'm not gonna use this as a bad word, but more demons inside, where Bob had to be kind of always on top. And yet, I, I said, you are. You're the best coach in the You're business. There. You're bright. you got a loving family. Your son Pat's a great kid. All that. And so I'm very defensive of Bob Knight because of what it was me. Did he make some mistakes? Without question. Did he allow those things to get to him? Yes. But not many people ever led. Quinn Buckner became a friend of mine when he was at the Celtics. And Quinn Buckner said, when I played for coach, I was in a trance on the court. We all were. And no one, very few people in our lifetime will ever do that to you. But a great, great coach. And, you know, uh, uh, no, I don't need to apologize for a guy who accomplished so much in his life. What I do say, you kind of like everything else, we'll just want that kind of out of it. But special, special yeah. coach. So. Coach, I want to share this with you because my broadcast partner and friend Donnie Marshalls is here with us courtside. I can't tell you how many times we've been sitting here in a shoot-around. And he looks up at those banners and he says, people always need to remember who started this. And that's you. And I, I do want Donnie to explain to America right now what this man that's with us means to you and the other former players. Yeah, we have a, a bunch of, of our guys that played for coach in the building tonight. Chris Smith, Charlie Bill and Wave is here. We, you know, it was a situation. This guy comes into my home 3,000 miles away. True story, gets out of a cab. I had all these other coaches get out of these rental cars. Gets out of a cab with a VHS tape. We had to borrow a VCR from a relative to watch this VHS tape. You guys tape. got so much money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were loaded. <laughs> Your mom. <laughs> she worked her tail off, but she wasn't wasting her money on no VHS player, so a VCR. So, so coach comes in and says, you are going to be a part of something special. He didn't talk about the NBA. He didn't talk about... You're going to score this many points. You're going to make this much money. He talked about being a man and being able to use what I learned in those four years at UConn to, to use the rest of my life. And, and to this day, some 30 years later, I am still using those same things I learned from this man right here to raise my family, to come to this job every day, to, to be a part of charitable situations. All of those things, yes, you have your parents. You learn a lot. My mother's... That's the most amazing person in the world to me. But Jim Calhoun is the one who kind of, he shaped me. He rounded that clay, that rough clay that came in, and I still use those things that, that you taught me to this day. And I, and I could never th be able to thank you enough for those. And we have conversations. We talk all the time. We're together. But it's nice that the world can, or at least our viewers can hear that. I, I think it's important that all of us understand that about Jim Calhoun. And what I say about the guys I had, and I was tough. I was tough on him. 
because I love them. Yeah. You know, it's a lot easier to walk away and say, get going, <laughs> as opposed to things I said. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I didn't mean them. I just meant at that time, you're my guy. I can't see you screw up like that. Matter of fact, you're too good a person to allow it to happen. And I just think that with all that, that's what we came up with. And I am having a life of coaching for 50 years. So many great kids, so many great stories. Darn's going to be in a book that I'm doing recently about yep. his story. Yep. And the stories of what happened in the culture. And by the way, what the guys gave me. Keith Marley, who you got to know pretty well, Dr. Yeah. Marley. I mean, he taught me about what it's like to come from the hill in Pittsburgh. Things I didn't know. Things I needed to learn. Riding in, Jalen Stewart with the bucket. Well, right now, what you're starting to see is just the fact that we're probably, you know, we're deep. And I, and I keep saying that at practice. Danny says, I think we have too many guys. Never can have too many guys, <laughs> as long as they're good guys. That's right. You know, as long as they're good guys, and, and you tell them what they need to do to be one of those guys. Yeah. And, and it's, it, you push each other. You know, those good players push the other players, and you pull players along. That's what it's about. I mean, Donnie's not going to tell you that someone hit somebody in a practice one time, and once we get the stitches squared away, and the relationship <laughs> after a month yeah, or so, it's like really cool. Yeah, we don't, but but yeah. what I'm saying, <laughs> we're able to get to this, You know, they, they get excited about something of achieving. Yeah. Together. Together. And, and, and they would kill in many ways for their brothers. And he'll tell you right now, when we get together as a group, and we do that hopefully every single year, I can guarantee you they won't go to bed because they miss each other so much in those times of growth, yep. those times in doing things. So sometimes when I hear this negativity about sport, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, we got things we got to clean up, NIL transfer, we got all that. But the relationship you guys have with each other, the brotherhood is so strong, it's unbelievable. It's why I love coaching because just like folks helped me along the way your brothers are there today for you and still are that'll be a shot clock violation so the lumberjacks will have it with 10 seconds left in this first half well this is a good opening even though the fans may not like the scoreboard quite as much i do because more kids are playing yeah and and you know the whole thing is yeah they may want you to play them I saw our schedule, North Carolina. I'll give you the teams we're playing, Gonzaga, et cetera. We got to get, get you know, out there and get loose a little bit, and we are. Samson Johnson with a rejection, 2.8 seconds it's here. It's amazing, Johnny, because from whence he came two years ago, yeah. great athlete. Yep. But now, nice thing I can say to him, he looks like a basketball player. He does. Player. He's got a great feel. It's, yeah, it's I, I love him. He's, yep. a, he's a great kid. By the way, the best player in the team, Alex might be the best player on the team. Wow. Might be. Probably could have been, should have been rookie of the year last he year. He just does Vegas. so many things. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and he's tough. So committed to the game. Oh, he is. These two guys together, he and Alex, would have, uh, would have had some fun <laughs> time together. And there's Samson Johnson with the final stop. Coach, thank you so much. Appropriate way to end the half. Jim Calhoun, the Hall of Famer. Coach, I got chills listening to you. So great to yeah, see you. Great. I love you, Coach. Love you, too. That's UConn basketball, folks. Jim Calhoun, we appreciate him joining us here in stores. And at the half, this Husky team up by 17. UConn on banner night with the trophy. With a moment of glory here in Gamble, Donovan Klingon and the Huskies all business with Caravan and Johnson combined it for 22. And the defending national champions have started their season strong.